Hi guys, I'm John, and welcome to part 7 of Smart Ways to Gain YouTube Subscribers. And I never really planned on doing a part 7, but there's a few corrections I'd like to make in the previous parts because YouTube is kind of a fluid, changing uh, website, and also there's things that I would like to uh, give out there that I've kind of learned since the last video or forgot to include. There's kind of, this is kind of a collection of random things. I, I apologize that this doesn't have a distinct focus beyond just making videos better. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the first part. Okay, the YouTube Partner Program. Um, initially, it was a partner program for the select few of YouTubers that basically were the stars of YouTube that people knew very well. There was probably less than a couple dozen of people that were partnered, but now they've opened the floodgates and allowed probably hundreds, if not thousands, of partners out there on YouTube. And it's a program where they um, basically give you a small percentage of the ad revenue generated from your videos. So it isn't going to make you rich if you are successful in getting into the partner program. It isn't going to probably generate hardly any money whatsoever in terms of what I've heard. I am not a partner, but I've talked to people who are and talked to people who know. And basically the word is, is it's not that great a thing. The one thing that partnership does give you is the ability to upload videos over 10 minutes. Um, but there also are much more tighter copyright enforcements. So if you have a lot of copyright material on your uh, channel and you apply for a partnership, most likely you're not going to be accepted. Um, so you need to prune all the stuff. That includes, you know, music in your videos that is, you know, someone else owns or anything like that. Any obviously TV shows or some things like that that are obvious they can tell by just looking at your channel that you don't own that material or very unlikely that you own that material. Um, so partners, I, frankly, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it kind of puts a cramp on your style and what you can do to a certain degree. Um, maybe one day people will start making a lot of money off the YouTube partner program, but right now I wouldn't recommend it unless you really want to upload videos longer than 10 minutes. Um, so that leads it to another thing, and that is the uh, copyright issues um, in, in terms of being a partner or not. Another thing that just happened to me recently is that um, I sent my, one of my uh, Glimpse documentaries videos to one of the uh, YouTube editors, and they initially accepted it and said, great, we love it, we're going to feature it. And then I got an email the next day saying, an email just giving me the terms of service agreement saying you need to read this. And it turned out that obviously I'd used a copyright song in the credits of my documentary and they wouldn't even tell me why they were rejecting it. They just said it was a terms of service violation. I kind of did the math and realized it was the only thing they possibly could be violating. Um, but they have a weird kind of schizophrenic policy to a certain degree and that is that they will not, they can't enforce copyright themselves. It's the copyright owner's responsibility to tell them to take down a video because they don't want it up because it's someone's using it without their permission. Um, YouTube itself or Google will not do that on their own. But at the same time, they won't feature anything and kind of call attention to the fact that they're featuring something that is using material that obviously that person didn't know. And like in my case, I was using a Doobie Brothers song for you know the opening credits of my documentary. So I had to re-upload the video with um, some Creative Commons music and credited the Creative Commons music in the description box, and then they immediately accepted it. So word of warning, um, if you're submitting anything to the editors um, or you're applying for the partner program, make sure you prune everything that is obviously a copyright violation. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is haters on YouTube. And a hater is a person that leaves kind of a unwarranted and very cruel or um, critical comment that usually is devoid of any type of content or relation to your video. It's just designed to kind of put you down, to hurt your feelings, to insult you um, in very, very explicit and hostile type ways. And, and I've seen this um, it's, it's, it's really prevalent on YouTube, and I think because video is so personal that it is exceptionally bad. Um, and this is a reason, or, or can be a shock to people that when they first start on YouTube and they get a little bit of popularity, is that this these kind of hater community sometimes descends upon them, um, and they, it's a shock because you're just like, why are these people saying these things? It can be really discouraging. But the one thing you have to learn is that everybody gets it. it, it no one is immune whatsoever. It doesn't matter how good your videos are. It doesn't mean how beautiful, attractive you are, or smart you are. Someone's going to call you stupid. Someone's going to call you ugly. Um, they're going to they're going to try to trash you any way they can, and it really is a warrantless almost type of activity, and and everyone gets it. So don't take it so personal. Don't be shocked when it happens because it inevitably will happen, especially if your video 
somehow achieves the rank of a top 100, you know, viewed for the day or something like that. It just people come out of the woodwork and just slam on you. Um, not everyone, of course, but it will be a certain percentage. My video was featured on the front page a couple months ago, and it was just, you know, every 10th comment was something just horrific about me or the video that really wasn't a creative you know, type of criticism or even a fair criticism. It was just some rampant, you know, diatribe against me or one line of just, you know, get, cursing at me or something like that. So anyway, don't take it personal. Um, everybody gets it. Um, and uh, just keep trudging on, you know, just ignore it, delete them, you know, block them if you need to. Okay, number three, bonus video tips. And I have a bunch for you. So the first one I want to talk about is when you're vlogging or for vloggers out there, um, people that are just talking in front of the camera, is it's very important to make as much eye contact with the camera lens as possible. Because you have to understand that vlogging is a conversation with the other person that's watching. Even though they can't necessarily talk back to you, the psychological phenomenon of watching someone talk into a camera makes it very personal and we identify it as a conversation or as a dialogue. And so if you're staring at yourself on your video, you know, during the whole time you're recording, it's easier to do that way because you can kind of see yourself and you can kind of manage your reactions and things like that. But it really breaks the connection that you make with an audience. And it will ultimately cost you subscribers. I, I know this for a fact. And and it's something that you need to be conscious of. Practice it. Um, close, turn off your monitor. Close the video preview screen so you're not tempted to look at it. Do, do these type of things. It may take a while. It's a little weird to do that at first. But you know, try to do it because it really is the most effective way to communicate uh, via video. Okay, the next two tips are kind of related, and there's kind of a, I don't know if you ever noticed, but, you know, the YouTube says for regular accounts that you can only upload videos of 10 minutes of length or less. Um, actually, that's not true. The real limit is 11 minutes, and uh, basically don't stop you. As long as the video is under 11 minutes, um, they'll allow you to upload it. Um, also, they've added a new feature in the last maybe six months called the multi-file uploader. It's a separate utility that you have to download, I think. Um, I think you have to download it. Um, I'll give a link in the description box. And it allows you to upload, instead of 100 meg file limits, it allows you to upload up to a gig of files all, all at once. So you can upload at the absolute highest quality. That's why I recommend strongly that you upload everything at 600, 640 by 480 pixels um, in resolution. Um, and since they have this now gig file limit, there's really no reason not to do this, especially it goes hand in hand with the new YouTube high quality options that they're switching over to, which is uh, 480 pixels by 360 pixels. Um, much better, much better bit rates, um, much higher quality looking video. And so that's the secret to YouTube is they store every video in its native format on their servers and they transcode it into these other uh, formats that are lower resolution usually, but they're definitely improving in quality over time. Um, the other thing is, is with transcoding that I've noticed with uh, Windows Media Video Files, which is what usually, um, or what definitely um, my Windows Movie Maker um, exports as, is that when they transcode it into the format that you watch on YouTube, which is a different video format than you upload it at, um, they, there's a problem with the transcoding and it usually chops off the last maybe half a second of video. And that can be very frustrating because sometimes people say things up to the very last minute, you know, punchline of a joke or something like that. Um, so what I do for all my videos is I bring it into Windows Movie Maker and then I make a text credit or just a, a title credit with a black background and a space in it and add it and make it a half a second long and add it to the end of my video. And so therefore that's the part that gets chopped off and the rest of the video that I want people to see is what's left. And so usually it works out pretty well. So add that black kind of black background or it can be any color or anything you want really, but just something that you know is going to be chopped off and that will save you from uh, having your video in too soon because I see it a lot on YouTube. Okay, here's another tip that's kind of subtle, but uh, another way to improve the video quality that you're putting up on YouTube. And that is the complexity or the detail of your background in your scene. So for vloggers, usually the main focus is you, maybe the person next to you or something like that, but the background's kind of really extraneous to most things. It doesn't really matter. Um, so it's very important to film in front of the most uh, simple and color, uh, you know, smooth, basic background, a you know, white wall, you know, something like that, something that really has a lot, very low detail. Um, let me give you an example. Let me show you some footage that I captured from a documentary. Okay, this is example one where someone is in front of a very simple background, a brick wall painted over, it's very solid color, there isn't a lot of detail, a lot of texture, um, the person is very clear. 
Okay, here's an example of what I'm talking about. You notice that the face has lost some of its detail. It's blurrier, it's muddier. Um, you can't see, there's no crispness of the features of the face. And that's because all the data in the scene is, be, is being used to render the background scene, which is bark and trees and grass. And this is a common problem. This is why outdoor footage on YouTube looks so poor, is because there's so much more detail than just, say, a simple wall or brick wall in this case. And so all that data can go to the person in the scene, where in this case, the scene is sucking away all the data from the person. Okay, my final tip is about webcams and just webcams in general. Um, there's a lot of features on webcams now. The software or the interface to control the settings is very detailed. They try to automate that process to make it kind of idiot proof for people. But in the process of doing that, they usually screw things up. As more, they make the actually problem way worse than it could be by just manually adjusting your settings. So go under your webcam settings, um, turn off all the automatic exposure, um, light your scene as brightly as possible. I talk about that in, I think, part four of my series. Um, and go in and adjust anything that you see as brightness or exposure or turn off ready light, which is a Logitech feature. Um, turn off anything that's auto exposure and, and adjust those settings yourself. Because a lot of times you'll be surprised about how nicely you can tune everything to, to customize to your scene and really make the video a lot smoother, a lot more higher frame rate, less blurrier. Um, less, usually a lot brighter, a lot more color rich. I mean, there's a lot of different settings that these webcams have. Um, it just takes a little practice. Don't be afraid to uh, adjust those settings. Usually there's a reset to defaults option in a lot of these pieces of software. And uh, play with it a little bit. I think you'll be shocked to see how much it really improves your video with then just plugging it in and using it as is. So finally, before I want to go, I want to talk about a few uh, things that have changed since I said things in the last video, things that don't work anymore. Um, YouTube has changed, or the software that I recommended doesn't work anymore with YouTube, and um, a website. Um, the first I want to talk about is twobravers or twobravers.com is now twobravers.org. Um, it's a great little uh, website community that is people that make uh, videos on YouTube. It's a great place to get your questions answered. Um, a lot of knowledgeable people there. Like I said in a previous video, the URL has changed, so I wanted to point that out. Um, the second is the um, video downloader software that I recommended um, has changed. Um, I'm going to post a link to my blog describing how to download video on YouTube and to um, get it. Um, you can actually get the higher quality version now and edit that. Um, the same tips apply in terms of transcoding it to a format that's usable by, say, Windows Movie Maker. Um, but the old uh, software recommended isn't really supported anymore, and there are newer and better things that you can do now with uh, these newer uh, plugins that plug into Firefox, actually. So I'll give that in detail, and if you're interested in that, check the description box. And uh, another thing that has changed is that you can't use HTML tags in your comments. You can't bold text, you can't italicize or underline. Uh, it's very frustrating. They took it away. I talked to the people at YouTube about this at the gathering. They said that, you know, they kind of feigned ignorance and they said, well, it's abusable. So I, I don't know. I tried talking into, at, you know, putting it back in because I thought it, it really made the comments a little bit more readable. Um, but anyway, you can't do that anymore, unfortunately. So that's, uh, those are the three corrections that I remember that YouTube have changed since about the last year. Um, so hopefully it helps. So that's about it. Um, I'll probably do a part eight one of these days. Um, there's a little bit more things I'd like to talk about, but I have to kind of collect enough of them to make a full video. So hopefully this helps. Until next time, take care.